Coach's Corner is presented by Roanoke Valley Harley-Davidson. Stop by their store on Peters Creek Road for new and used motorcycles, service and repair, along with Harley-Davidson clothing and collectibles. Hello and welcome in to another episode of Coach's Corner. I'm Mitch Stewart and this morning I'm joined by Rail Yard Dogs head coach Dan Rimner. Dan, thanks for joining me. Of course. I know now that we've gotten into the off season a little bit, your job kind of changes up a lot during the summer. But before we kind of look forward to what that looks like and what next season looks like, I want to come back to the protective list. And I know we've talked about it in years past when it could be a little bit different when there's not an expansion team coming in or not. What's kind of your strategy, your MO, when you're trying to look at those 13 names that you want to protect at the end of a season? Um, yeah, obviously it changes when there's no expansion in the league. So there's no... You know, there's no first year draft for a, for a new team coming in, so nobody can be forced to leave any of the teams that they finished with at the end of the season. So there, there's a lot to go into it. Um, obviously, you know, we want to keep make sure that we're holding on to, to value with this team. At the same time, you see it all around the league where um, there's players that have played for a certain team for a number of years that are loyal to that team that maybe don't need to be protected and they, they may still be back. <clears throat> you know, on the other side, it can be used in a lot of ways. Uh, you know, we look at holding on to value and, and whether that player is going to be here or not. It also allows you to kind of trade rights and, and help hold on to those, uh, those playing rights as well. The other side of it is, uh, you know, sometimes it's, uh, it feels good to be protected and, and sometimes players uh, appreciate that, you know, comfort of knowing that they are protected and wanted there. So there, there's a lot of different factors that go into it. And, you know, fortunately, uh, my assistant coaches from this year, uh, Ian and, and Nick, are, are around all summer as well. We sat down and had, had a bunch of conversations, made a bunch of phone calls to these guys and, and kind of uh, you know put our heads together and, and, and put down the list that we came up with. I want to look at a couple of different groups as you kind of break down this protected list. <clears throat> First of all, we'll start with the goaltending room. I had some really good goalies this year with Austin Odebush and Tyler Roy in that yeah. room. Neither of them on the protected list. I'm just curious to know what kind of went into that decision and maybe if you can let us into a little bit of that insight of those conversations you have with them. Yeah, I mean, uh, Rhoda Bush, uh, I think, has found some, some roots here. He's been here a number of years, and he's been you know one of the top goalies in the league year after year um, for the last three, four years here. And, and he, I think he just continues to get better with, uh, with age. And, um, you know, knowing that he's local and, and uh, that he's here, he's bought into dogs hockey, and, and we know that without a question. Uh, and, and T. Roy coming in, you know, he was exactly what we were looking for as far as a backup down the stretch. He did great when he, when we put him in. He was he was fantastic, and he was chomping at the bit to get back in. And, and again, he's another guy who experienced a little bit around the league uh, as we had him here, and then he and then he went on to other teams. Um, and uh, you know, in our conversation, uh, we believe this is where he wants to be. And you know, we we we'd like to see him have another opportunity and start to pick up a little, maybe a little bit more game time. Two names when you look at the group of forwards that stick out a little bit different from the rest are two different players that didn't finish the season here. You had Tyson Kirkby that had come and helped you guys out for a couple of weeks from Binghamton. He just won a Commissioner's Cup, of course, in the FPHL. And then Nick Ford, who had gone to Poland earlier in the year and taken an opportunity there. What went into that decision to get both of those guys back on the protected list this offseason? Yeah, again, uh, different reasons. Not necessarily that anybody's not committed here or anything, but, you know, with, uh, with Kirkby, uh, we brought him in for the weekend, and it was an opportunity to see. We knew that he was going to have, he was not going to have to, but he wanted to head back to the team that he was captaining in, uh, in uh, Binghamton there. And, uh, you know, after seeing him through those few games, you know, he had a ton of potential. We'd love to see him in a dog's uniform for a longer stretch. And you never know what happens uh, through an offseason when they don't finish somewhere like with you. So, um, you know, I didn't want to, he's one that we didn't, uh, we didn't call. We didn't want to bother. He's, he's in the middle of a, of a, uh, playoff stretch and we didn't want to put anything in his head and obviously pump for him and, and then uh, to get that job done up there um, but one that if uh, if he's looking to play we'll talk to him in the, in the next coming weeks here and we'd love to bring him back and then Nick Ford just the value alone you, you know everybody knows what he's capable of when he is on top of his game and motivated uh, he, he can be the best player in this league by far no question about it so um, just the value in him alone and, and hoping that uh, Hoping that he'll like, want to come back to North America to play this this coming year, and and we'll uh, you know we'll keep the line in on him, and hopefully hopefully we'll be seeing him in a dog uniform again. You had seven other Fords on that protective list for you all, a lot more I feel like than usual as far as kind of stacking that one position group. Does that kind of change how you guys maybe look into the fall, how you maybe recruit when you're starting to pick some of the names for maybe who's going to be here in training camp? Uh, not exactly. You know, at the end of the day, at this level too guys that are first year guys that just finished up 
sometimes those are the guys that end up retiring. The right, the right job situation comes up, and and you can you have the conversations with them, and you know you you keep you keep that line of communication open. But at the end of the day, as much as they even want to play, sometimes their best life move next is is to enter the workforce and then if they find that right situation you know it happens so across the board we still recruit the same way and we're looking for the top players that are going to fit our system and, and fit our style here so um definitely doesn't change that way um that obviously means that if everybody that uh, is protected and not protected are committed to coming back it means that uh, the competition is going to be even better uh come come training camp and, and the guys returning over the years have understood that as well you know Every year, we want to make sure that there's not complacency coming back to it. And whether you're a third, fourth, fifth year vet or a second year guy coming back that was on the protected list, no job, you know, we like to say no job secure. But at the end of the day, you know, we want to bring in guys that are going to push everybody to get better. A defenseman group was really loaded at the end of the year. You guys were carrying eight by the time the playoffs ended. You ended up protecting four of them, including defenseman of the year, Brandon Pepe, two of the rookies there with Troy Quinn and Aiden Gerdukas, and then John McDonald comes back as well. But that does leave a couple of those other names where it could be a situation like you were talking about where there are guys that want to be here, they just weren't maybe on the protected list. How do you feel about that group heading into this offseason and looking forward to next season? Yeah, I thought we were just kind of getting better as as the year went on, you know, bringing in those those bigger bodies that were starting to feel out of the pro game. Um, and uh, we're, we're excited about the group going forward. Um, you know, the ones that weren't on the list, again, we got some guys that are loyal dogs all, all the way through and through. They bleed the, the blue and gold, and uh, I don't think there's any change in that. So, um, you know, those guys will keep it close contact with, and, and uh, when the time comes, if, uh, if they're looking to play again and they'll be at this level, then, you know, um, we'll, we'll make the appropriate signings and whatnot. But the guys that are on there, it's a, it's a great base to start with. And, and uh, you know, led by a guy like uh, Brent Pepe, who has just continued to get better every year. And I hope, and I think he deserves his opportunity at the ECHL, um, you know, and hopefully we can help facilitate that in some way. And, you know, we'll be sitting down here still uh, hoping that we see him back. But uh, for, for him, I, I hope he gets a good opportunity there. Last one for you, Dan. I know that this is definitely a 365-day-a-year job. It's not just October to April, as some people may think or may expect. What is your recruiting process like once you hit the summer? Now the protected lists are out, and you kind of have an idea of maybe who's available, maybe who isn't. When does that process start for you when maybe you start to look for players that weren't here last year to maybe try their try their try themselves out here with Roanoke? Yeah, uh, honestly, it's it starts right away. Like, And it's nothing, it's not you know, crazy uh, every hour of every day. But the the big way is, you know, these guys all know each other. Most most of these players have uh, friends that either play for other teams or graduate from college. So I'm a big player recruiter. I, I talk to my players and say, hey, you know how we do things here. Um, you want to be back. Who's going to help us and who's going to fit, you know, our coaching style and also our culture here? Who's going to fit the right way? Who's going to play selfless hockey? Who's going to buy into the team, team mentality more, more than themselves? Um, and immediately when those lists were coming out, I already had some of our guys reaching out and saying, hey, this guy wasn't protected. I, I know I'm a good guy. I think he'd fit. It might be something worth looking into. So we'll start making those calls here and see, you know, a lot of them might have the same the same kind of um, understanding that they plan on going back. But you never know what happens. And, and so you, you try to hopefully pick up a couple. That experience coming in from, a, from another organization is always a good thing, too. Well, Dan, thanks so much for your time. I hope you have a great summer. Man. Thanks, Mitch. You too. That's going to do it for this episode of Coach's Corner. Rail Yard Dog season tickets on sale now, by the way, for 2024-2025. Make sure that you call the Rail Yard Dogs front office or visit our website at www.railyarddogs.com for more information on how you can be a part of next season here with the dogs. Thank you so much for tuning in and have a great rest of your day.